Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner Dean. We are going to be doing JL115. That's the number of this episode for future reference. That's charcoal drawing for beginners and helpful tips for everyone else. At the top of your, whether you're on our YouTube platform or our Facebook platform pinned at the top of this episode with the chat, is going to be the links to be able to go to two different documents that I've created for our shows. One is all of our shows in chronological order. So if you hear us happen to reference another show number during this show, you'll be able to just jot that down. If you've got a, a scrap piece of paper handy, you'll be able to go to that document that's got all those links in there, click on the link for that episode and be able to watch it on either the YouTube platform or if it's one of our really, really old ones, from the first year to what, second, halfway through the second year, Katie, was when we picked up YouTube. Yep. Um, you'll be able to watch it on Facebook instead. Uh, that way, all those episodes are there for your perusal. And then we also have a second document for people that are kind of either short attention span theater or they just really only want to watch shows that relate to topics that they're interested in, which is totally understandable. You'd rather be in the studio than reading through a bunch of different show titles trying to find what you want. So that show's got them all by the listing of uh, different mediums, uh, if we've got guests, some of our things where we've done Arts of the Carolinas, all sorts of different topics. So that might be the really easy and fun way to find an episode to be able to watch in your downtime. So those are there for you to be able to access at all times. Um, with this episode, if you're curious about any of the products that we're going to be showing doing the demonstration here, what you're going to do is go to our website, www.jerriesartorama.com. You're going to type in that keyword JL115. That's JL115. Right in that search box at the top of our website, hit search. That will bring up this list of all those products. For you to be able to see if there was something that you liked, if there was something you want to learn more about, um, that'll all be listed right there as far as to what we show on this show. Uh, drawing with charcoal. Drawing with charcoal can be really awesome or incredibly messy, as most of us that played with it in elementary school know. Uh, and if you're like me and you don't like getting things on you, it's not always the medium that makes you very happy. However, it's actually not that difficult to learn to control with a little practice. Um, it can become very addictive because it's very immediate, it's very loose, it's gestural, uh, but it can sometimes be a little unpredictable. If you don't know that much about the different types of charcoal, a little bit of education on charcoal will tell you what is probably going to work best for your needs and therefore make it easier for you to pick up, use the product, and develop a learning curve. So we're going to go over different types of kind of the basic types of charcoal that are out there on the market. Um, and then we're gonna do a little bit of demo and then we'll actually get into just, uh, you know, a short quick study using charcoal, uh, maybe two if we've got enough time. So, um, so let's go from there. So I have a degree in art. I've got a, a bachelor of studio art, however, researching these I always find out a little bit of something that maybe I didn't know that much about and um, in reading over some different pages some professional artists have uh, with just kind of ideas on how to teach people charcoal different tips and tricks they have there was one guy who was absolutely awesome who always said he always wears a glove well if you don't like getting stuff on you like me it's like, okay, so that sounds like a bonus, but then that also sounds like you're going to get something on it. Well, he explained why, and it made a lot of sense. Um, if you've got a glove on, you're not transferring your hand oil to the paper before you're even getting charcoal on it. You've got it so that, because everybody puts that hand down, right? If any of you lefties are out there, or righties that just happen to be a little bit more uh, exuberant, shall we say, in where you put your hand and move it around when you're drawing, it gives you a way to actually cover up your hand so that you can still grip that drawing material. It looks a little, I feel like there should be sequins on the back. Yeah. You know, or something. Some sort of maybe some very fancy, I don't know, pencil sharpeners or something. Some bling, Katie. 
you're all about the bling. Don't look at me like that. It would just seem more, you know, I don't know, exciting than just, you know, I, I feel like I, a Charlie Chaplin thing, like I should be, you know, doing something. I don't know. Uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. But this way your hands can still grip the medium if you decide to, you want to blend with your fingertips, which once it's down, it's not as big of a deal. The issue is if that oil gets into your paper, especially if it's cotton paper, it can make it so that the paper will not take the charcoal evenly. It may even make it so it'll take it in dark smudges where you've got hand oil or even not at all. So, so it's a good way to keep from actually smudging with the oil on your hand. Um, it's also just a good way to, when you get done, you only have to wash your fingertips. It's not, you know, all up your, uh, you've seen me, Frida, you know. So these are just the cotton gloves that we have. I took them and made them into, you know, I feel like I should be doing the Oliver Twist begging in the streets now with this glove. I actually thought about wearing a second one, but then that would get everywhere and then that would smear. So not going to do that. So anyway, other things from that, in case you don't like gloves, Leaning Bridge. We have that all the time on the show. It's just an acrylic piece that you can see through that's got little acrylic pieces on the bottom. Put your hand on that and be able to kind of rest it and then draw over it. So that's something that you can do instead. Even taking a, you know, a piece of typing paper or something like that and putting that hand on it. Um, on other episodes, you've seen me use a hockey brush that I put my hand on. Anything to keep that transfer of oil going is a good idea. Okay, so not every style of charcoal. Charcoal is just kind of a moniker it, it, for a, this dried either pressed stick or where it's something where it's been burned down to just kind of what's left on the stick. So they're not the same. So we're going to talk about these really quick. We've got vine charcoal and willow charcoal. What is that exactly? Well, this is willow charcoal. Willow charcoal is actually where they take pieces of willow stick, put it in a kiln, suck out all the air, and then cook it down until all that's left is the carbon in it. Vine charcoal is the same, but with grape vines. So when people are like, what's the difference? What's the difference? It's, it's just that piece of kind of wood or woody stem-like tissue that's left. Um, they seal it in a pipe, so if there's no oxygen in there, otherwise this would burn all the way down. Like if you've got a grill and you're using charcoal, the charcoal eventually disappears and disintegrates, right? So that keeps that so you still have that carbon left. Now, vine charcoal and willow charcoal produces rougher, less permanent marks. So what exactly does that mean? So if we've got our Jerry's Colossal Sketch Paper, which we've used before, <laughs> Katie's like, ah, it's my no. favorite. Okay, now this makes some nice black lines, and I think that willow is slightly darker than the vine charcoal. However, it's rougher, it's, it doesn't really stick to the paper as much. When you put it over paper, you can kind of feel a skipping compared to other charcoal. Um, you can take it, you can dust it off very easily without any issue. In fact, I'm going to... I'm gonna put this on so I'm not getting dust all over this hand and then putting it on paper later. That's my problem is I get it on one hand and then it gets everywhere. Yeah, then it'll be on my nose. Just wait, wait till the end of the episode. Hilarity may ensue, okay? So this isn't really your blending and shading. When you turn it on its side, get a little piece of it. When you turn it on its side, this just, just so doesn't have that kind of really nice, it's almost like a cool color doesn't have that really nice warmth and super deep blackness of maybe some of the compressed charcoal uh, sticks or squares or even charcoal pencils. So um, what then is this used for? It's obviously very brittle. It breaks very easily. Rough sketches, this is ideal for. Um, doing your underdrawing before you do an oil painting because as you start to do your oil painting over it, it does start to dust off or even dusts off in that paint and it's immediately gone you don't see it so it's great for you know super big gestures if you're just trying to you know get a shape to something a lot of people use it for even like figure drawing where if you're in a figure drawing class you may have 30 second poses where you're just supposed to with each of those 30 second poses get a really quick gesture just a very fast grasp of form a lot of times they want you to use vine or willow charcoal 
Uh, so it's just more for kind of your basic use, not use, not for so much the finished drawing per se. All right. So that's your willow charcoal. Then let's gosh, this, this paper's so thick. I'm like, there, surely there's two pieces there, and there's not because it's, it's not just it. nice and thick. It's a great paper. For I know. Oh, this. we don't want to draw over this. Apparently, this is in here hiding. Go to the next one. All right. So let's talk about the compressed charcoal, okay? This is ground down into a fine powder, and then they mix it with gum binder, and then they compress it super duper hard. So you've got a much thicker, much less breakable stick. See how much richer that is? You can hear it going on. Much harder to break that piece of stick. See how that's just a lot warmer, meaning redder. The other one had a blue undertone. Redder to me always looks blacker than just that kind of cooler color. The the uh, willow charcoal almost to me looks like a really dark Payne's gray. So you've got, you know, you can get really nice light form like that, that then you can blend in to make a gray value. It's just a very, very nice, and with that you can see that to me it looks even more kind of that warm kind of reddish. So this charcoal is better for more like your finished drawings. It's better for, um, I mean, you can do it with gestural stuff, but it, it's, this can go all the way to that finished drawing. You can use it on tinted paper. You can use it on just regular white paper. Um, you can even use it on cotton paper. Okay, so that's all this is. That Now, and when they talk about, um, different, you know, a neutral or a hard, and then there's a soft, and then there's an extra soft. Some of them are rated, you know, like pencils, where it goes up to 6B. The only difference in that, it's the same charcoal. They're going to use more or less binder to make it softer and come off of that charcoal easier. So the softer it gets, the blacker it's going to look because it's gonna come off with much more ease. So that's the only difference. It's the exact same stuff in there. It's just that binder to, um, to the actual powder ratio. All right, so you can see this is messy because it's a stick. I've got it all over my uh, hands. If you don't, you like the blackness of the charcoal but you don't want the mess, you can go to something like charcoal pencils instead. Now these are my absolute favorite that we've got even over some of the really expensive European ones that I won't name any names. But these are in a paper wrapped barrel instead of, usually they use cedar because cedar is really durable and even when it's dropped, it tends to help cushion that kind of lead, whether it's charcoal or graphite or whatever inside the pencil. This is actually paper, and I've not had any problems with accidentally dropping these and finding that the lead's been broken inside. It's a little bit thinner, so to me it's a little bit easier to grip. And this is the neutral, but look at how not, you can get a really nice, super fine line. So instead of kind of those sticks either having to take them and, you know, use a sanding pad if it gets rounded out from drawing and paper would be helpful and using the sanding pad and kind of sanding that edge down to where you've got kind of a, a sharper point this you can use for a good while with still having you know this pretty fine line and then what do you do you can use a regular sharpener sharpen it get it back to a nice firing point again. So you can use this and instead of having to blend with, you know, your finger to get a gray value, you can do really fine line work. You can do cross hatching and things like that. So this gives you kind of that if you're a big control freak or you don't like the dirtiness of charcoal, this may be your charcoal of choice. Now, um, it's the same type of a thing where it's going to have the different, you know, this is neutral, there's a soft, there's an extra soft. So let's see kind of what the big difference is between the two. So this is neutral. And soft. This 
See how that's getting blacker and that started wearing down a little bit faster. And then the extra soft. See that big difference? You can see in writing with it without being a little bit more gentle, it crackled a little on the tip. So this is how you can see that difference. Same charcoal in it, it's just that difference in the binder to charcoal ratio that makes that a lot blacker. All right, so we've got that. Oh, and the other thing that I didn't. Did you ever say what pencil that was? These are the Marie's um, charcoal pencils. Now, one thing I neglected to mention, I just saw it under something, I laid something on it accidentally. If you don't like that feel of vine charcoal in it, you're like me, they make. I don't like the feel of vine charcoal. They make, I know, it, feels, it feels like screech. Screechy like chalk, doesn't yeah, it? it? But it worse. It feels like when you scratch your fingers. Across yes. Your it's, yes. Okay. It well. Yeah, like well, oh, one day on the website when I was looking for something else, I found this little doodad. Where you slide this in here like this. Actually, it's helpful. This is where you can also use way down to the tip of it rather than not being able to work with a little stub. You slide this in the holder. You slide this little sleeve up and voila Ta -da. fancy yeah so then you can't yes, you don't that. feel that a you don't get dirty like i've already we gotten but you've got that handle to be able to work with so and it gives you, you can hold it and look like cruella de vil yep always comes in <laughs> for your... <laughs> sorry yeah so exactly so that's kind of a neat little gizmo. So if you're an oil painter and you use a lot of those, this is an, uh, an invaluable invaluable device. Plus, it's like costs next to nothing. I have like three of them at home. Yeah. I don't even like drawing my underdrawings with charcoal. I just like to have them because once in a while I'll do something real quick with that. Yeah. It's much happier. Much happier than the squeaky, scritchy, scratchy. All right. So that's what we got the charcoal pencils. We went through all that. Now... The oil impregnated charcoal. That is exactly what it sounds like. When, when charcoal and an oil pencil love each other very much, they have little oil impregnated yes. charcoal babies. No. Little jumbo jets. Okay, so yes, we make a great version of this um, based off of a, a popular European oil impregnated charcoal pencil. But this is a jumbo size, so you get a lot more lead in it. To me, these are a little bit easier to hold. Um, this makes a really nice dark black, but without the smearing that you get. Can you guys see that? Can anybody see that I just did that? You have to, still, it's barely smearing, and that's with really scrubbing it. You can see right there that little bit of smearing. So that makes it really nice for being able to do some very dark drawings, but without rubbing your hand over it is easy to smear now where this does kind of not always make for the happiest of endings is if you tend to be a very heavy-handed person you may want to do your underdrawing in something lighter because this does not erase as well as regular charcoal regular charcoal you know you can so let's see the marie's eraser you can see that erases but there's still some ghosting of the line right So, with the regular charcoal, this is the vine charcoal, because my wife put that over there. Remember how we said that really doesn't stick to very much? There's a little bit of ghosting, but it's definitely better than that whale pencil. Then you've got varying shades of, this is a pretty uh, charcoal heavy pencil, the Marie's. So, those don't erase quite as well either, but the, well, in some ways those, though, Katie, those look about like the oil pencil, don't they? Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to know. So, so just be wary when you're using it as far as what that pressure is. Make sure you've got your drawing where you want it before you start getting super heavy and dark for racing. So the Marie's works well. The Vanish is about, gonna be about the same. Yep. And then a nice thing when you're doing their under sketch and you just want to pick up little bits is that needed eraser 
I mean, you can just rub it and pick charcoal up for the most part and mush it into any shape you want to get little bits and pieces or a rounded area or what have you. So, hey, I have all right, a question. yes. Um, how would you relate, like the general to the carbon pencil? Is that kind of related to charcoal or is it totally different? Carbon is different and I should have written that down because now it, the, they say that that escapes me. It's not quite the same, it's not processed the same. Um, it's, oh, I, mean, I remember now, it's lamp black. So it's actually a soot based pencil. It's not charcoal, which is the carbon based pencil. I know. That's interesting though. The more you know. I know. Do -do -do -do. It's the gloves. It's like rich mime, on one side, poor mime, rich mime, poor mime. Oh, I was going to say on one right. side you look like Michael so, Jackson. I know. You look like a street urchin. <laughs> it's, it's the, it's the, the guy with the mustache and the bowler hat. Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> yeah. I'm aware. I know. It, it's like I should know that since that was when I was a teenager. That was on the silent movies, right? Smart Alec. All right. So, white charcoal. I didn't know. Is white charcoal really charcoal? Yeah. No. It's not. It's like white chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Okay. Only it probably tastes better than white chocolate, Amanda. No, don't eat white charcoal. No. I love white chocolate. That's, Just that's because blasphemy. I love butter and sugar. Blasphemy. Your palate is uncultured, Amy. <laughs> Blasphemy. That's Everybody. just candy. It's just candy with a fancy name. All right, Actually, so. No, that's something entirely different. Off my titanium, titanium dioxide or calcium carbonate and clay mixed together makes your white charcoal. So the Soho Sketch Squares, the Jerry's Jumbo White, that's what you've got. You actually have a white pigment bound with some clay to make a nice firm stick or lead is the case maybe here that you can use like charcoal okay so not as exciting but it you know now you know so all right it, do we have any other questions about these sticks before moving on so the white one is it kind of like chalk would you be able to erase it like chalk or it's, it's going to be harder to erase because, especially with this, it's got oil impregnated in it in the Jerry's Jumbo Jet. With the other one, it's going to be a little bit harder to erase because it's got clay in it. It's like a pastel, right? Depending on the pigment and depending on the tooth of the paper is going to depend on how well it erases, whether it's just the stick or whether it's got the oil in it. The stick is probably going to be a lot easier than the oil. We can try that on the gray. Are you going to talk about fixatives later? Uh, we've got a fixative. Use a fixative specifically for charcoal. When you spray fixative, you shake it, read the directions on the back. Take a lot. If it says two minutes, set the timer on your cell phone because I guarantee you, you think you've shaken it for two minutes and it's been like 27 seconds. If your forearms aren't burning and you're not switching from hand to hand to hand to hand and starting to work up a sweat, you probably haven't shaken it for two minutes. And Katie and I know because yep. when we put like uh, varnish and stuff on things or even fixative, we're just like, wow, that is way longer than I ever imagined it would be. What does that do for it? Mixes it up because this is made of all sorts of different chemicals that make that fixative as well as it's mixed is going to determine how well it protects your work. Also, the spray is going to be finer if it's mixed really, really, really well. So you're going to want it made for charcoal specifically to follow the directions on the, on the can. And when you use fixative, start spraying before the work, spray across the work, stop. Don't stop spraying on the work. Don't go, this isn't Aquanet and it's not the 80s, ladies. So you want to spray across, lift, stop. Spray across, stop, lift. Spray across, let that dry, turn it the other way, do it again. You don't have to just do the fixative one time. You can do multiple layers of fixative, especially if you're using heavy charcoal or pastel. All right, just, you wanna do it lightly. It's, you don't wanna, if it soaks and saturates your paper, if you realize you need to lift something, you're never getting it off. Yes, Amanda. Can you layer the white one over the black one? It'll probably smear, right? Okay, the oil pencil is harder to layer, the white over the black. The other one where it's charcoal, the compressed charcoal, 
you actually can, but it will start to smear. So you want to leave yourself either, either have it be a very light layer of charcoal under it, or even leave yourself no charcoal for it to pop really well. And we'll play with it on, um, on this, uh, the tone gray paper in just a minute. Now, so the, we've got the colossal sketch. That is just a really nice 60 pound paper with a really good tooth to it. That works really great for charcoal. It is paper pulp paper. It's acid free. And so it's, it's something that will stand the test of time. However, it's still paper pulp. You've got the 400 series that's uh, paper pulp that's toned gray. So that's actually this really beautiful gray color. So you can use that white and the black on there with this as kind of your medium toned value. So that's a fantastic thing. That's their, the Strathmore 400 series is, is the series they do the gray in. Um, so that's, this is the highest quality non-cotton surface that they make, okay? Now, Strathmore makes a specific charcoal paper that's a 500 series. Anytime it's a 500 series, that means that it's 100% cotton, okay? It's a natural white. So it's a, it's a slightly off-white. To me, that's kind of like a very pale eggshell color. You think, Katie? Yeah. Kind of eggshell or is it a crew? Yeah. Crew. So uh, that's if, if you're going to be doing where you're doing charcoal portraits of people, uh, where this is something that's going to be for a commission or something like that, the 500 series may be what you want to do it on. Just because that's cotton, it's, it's the highest kind of industry standard of uh, a final paper to do any sort of artwork on that's uh, going to have the best archivability. Yes, Frida? In regards to the fixative, yes. Um, once you've put fixative over your charcoal drawing, um, can you then use oil or acrylic paints over it? Okay, uh, oil or acrylic paints over charcoal. Acrylic would work. However, you're putting something that's very wet on something that was dry and that just has a very fine spray fixative. You may lift it up oil whatever your surface is of your uh, for your substrate already has to be primed to protect it against the lasting acidic effects of oil paint that's why they put gesso on canvas okay or or an oil primer if they put an oil primer on like a linen they still put some sort of a barrier under it whether it's the rabbit skin glue whether it's a PVA, there's a reason for that because that oil will eventually start eating through to the substrate. So if you want to use charcoal, I took one of the wood. Can you go get the, um, that little drawing of the dog there? That's a good, a really good example. Um, I've got, I've got a drawing here. That's, that's yeah, that, that's something that I did at home on a different painting. I, I took a wood panel. I wanted the wood to show through. So first I used um, a whole lot of the uh, golden GAC 100, which is a sealer for wood panels, okay? Did three coats, yeah, yeah. Then I did the drawing over that. This is actually graphite, but whether it's graphite or whether it's charcoal, this will work, okay? So did that with charcoal and graphite on this particular drawing because I wanted that wood grain to show through because it was hands, all right, on a form. Then I took fixative and I put three or four very, very just mist, like fog coats over it to seal it. Then I took clear gesso, Windsor Newton clear gesso, and I put three coats, very thin coats over that, right? So it's been primed it's been, the drawing has been applied, the fixatives then applied, then there's acrylic gesso put over that. So not only is that acrylic gesso going to be a little bit more absorbent and toothy and bond with the oil or even acrylic if you're gonna use that, but it's protecting this drawing from being smeared everywhere. And when I did the uh, acrylic gesso, I put it on a foam roller and lightly put it across for the first coat because I did not want to take a brush and move it in case it picked up through that fixative. So it was kind of more gently laid on, all right? So that would be a way that you could do that and seal the actual drawing either in charcoal or pencil 
and then put a something that'll protect the panel from oil paint. So I'm glad that was over there to use as an example. So, yes. One more fixative question. Okay. What's the shelf life on a can of fixative? Uh, it should be, I mean... Is it a year? A decade? I, I, it, you're supposed to keep them in a cool, dry place. I don't know if you've ever heard that Traveling Wilbury song. That's the joke of the song, is you're supposed to keep stuff like this in a cool, dry place. So it's not going to be exposed to heat where the can can expand or contract, but not in cold where the can can expand or contract, right? So I've had this, not this brand of fixative, but Krylon, where it was good for probably 12 or 13 years. Oh, you say that because I had a brand of Krylon that I just recently left outside accidentally in the hot sun and went to go spray something with it and it came out like I was dusting something with powder and then went Whoa. straight off. Yes, so you did not keep it in a cool dry place. No. It turns into like rice powder. Learn from Katie's yeah. life lesson. <laughs> yeah, so as long as it's, obviously you don't want to test it on your artwork. If you're not sure and it's been a while, do a scribble on the same paper that you're, you've got your artwork on. Even if it's a fancy paper, better to waste a, the cost of a piece of paper than damage your drawing, okay? So then you can test it and see. It's, it's that, that part is up to you. Maybe if you're unsure when you get cans of, of, of either this type of stuff or even um, acrylic gessos, um, acrylic mediums, put the date on it that you bought it so you know how old it is. So if you open it and like, especially with acrylic mediums and it's starting to look yellow, you know it may be pretty old. Check that date. And if it's been a while, 86 it. All right. Any other questions? Are we good? We can, we can start. Can you put watercolor over oil pencil? Uh, that's something that you would need to test. I, I would think that it will, it could potentially lift and pull. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, you could use it as like a resist, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If it's a super it's oily what pencil, to do. these aren't the super oily. You'd yeah. have to really have it super black, black, black. So, um, again, test that before you start into a big fancy artwork with a, something really dramatic. Test it first. Do some scribblings. It's it's like we talk about swatching paint. So it's this. It can be the same for that kind of stuff. All right. Is there any reason a charcoal fixative can't be used on a graphite drawing? It's usually the same thing. Like this is crayons, pencils, and charcoal. It's, they're typically the same thing. They're a dry medium. Um, ones for pastels are going to be different because they usually have a UV protector and stuff like that in them if they're a good quality soft pastel fixative. Uh, but I would think even those could be used on charcoal and pencil in a pinch. It's just a lot more expensive and you'd be... Yeah. using your fancy stuff for something not as fancy. Um, besides blending with your finger, stumps, stomps, it's an interchangeable thing, tortillions, which are the little harder rolled kind of pointier paper. The stumps and stomps are where it's soft and it's been kind of sharpened down, where the tortillions are a rolled tip. Then there's even really huge, if you're working large scale, it's a rice paper stomp. Now, um, if they get dirty, like, uh-oh, it's dirty, you can just take those sanding pads, and that's really, I think, more what sanding pads are for. To me, you're wasting a lot of sanding pad if you're sharpening your charcoal on it. It's better to sharpen it on a really rough piece of paper. You take this, wipe off the excess on something you don't care about, and clean it by sanding it down on that pad. The rice paper takes longer, but it starts taking the mess out, and then you'll be able to use it from there, okay? Rice paper is much more porous. And it smells like using a saw with paper. Does it? Mm -hmm. Like when you're sanding and you can smell the sandpaper, only the ricey. All right. So, uh, but, uh, but, uh, so we want to, what do you think? The Soho squares? Everybody? Up for that square since we've got the especially on the gray, it probably show up a little better. Yeah. And it's a little looser with the sticks as opposed to the pencils. Um the the if you saw the advertisement for this show and there's a little dog. Remember that one, Katie? Yeah. Of Waldo. Yeah. Waldo. Uh that one's actually done with the Jerry's Jumbo Jet, 
on a brown tinted paper instead of the gray. Just with the Jumbo Jet white and black, that, that one's done there for that episode advertisement. Okay. So when you're, when you're working on this kind of stuff, I have to put my glasses on so I can see. Um, what do you think? A funny goat? Goat, you want a goat, goat, goat. What do you think? Goat. Goat or gorilla? Goat, you? Yeah. Gorilla will be harder for you guys to see. Gorilla will be harder to see. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to do that. Oh, that's going to be hard to see with the drawing out of that. You can just go, you want to go to full overhead for this. That might be the easiest. And then I can do this and draw here being left-handed. There, there we go. That'll work. Okay. So while you're doing that, mm -hmm. um, does fixative ever need to be reapplied or is it your coat when you're done with your drawing and you're done? You're, you're doing two to three really light coats of it and then it should be fine. But when you're, when you're doing a drawing, you're going to be matting and framing it to protect it. So, I mean, the fixative is only there to keep dust from falling down when it's matted and framed if you're using it as a finished artwork. Not, you know, for, for just hanging the paper bare because the paper is porous, so you don't want that to be exposed to the elements, even just environmental uh, dust, dirt, uh, you know, Somebody cooks bacon and grease gets in the air in the house. Oh, it's true. My studio is right next to the kitchen, and you can sometimes see the. It's like the early morning device. You see the, no, you see the you know the kind of fog of it coming in, so you know that that's airborne, right? So, which obviously, if I'm in there and seeing that, that is not me burning the bacon. Just to clarify that. All right. So when you're working with charcoal, kind of a good reference for beginners, and I've got to take this off, this just is too much to put on that hand too. Um, value is a huge importance in that. And when we say value, we're talking about if you've got your white and you've got, oh, of course that's too far out of the picture, okay. You've got your, this is your white, your lightest light. This is your darkest dark. Those are your lightest and your darkest value. You want to find, have your lights and darks, but you want there to be some in between, not just this gray and the whitest white and the darkest dark, okay? So that's very important. You want to assign a value percentage to kind of those colors in between, the shadows, you know, the ears on the sky and all that to be able to make this a realistic looking likeness. Um, we always talk on the show about squint, 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 right? And everybody's like, I don't understand that. It's just be able to see what your values are. All right. Um, you want to use those values with the highlights and the lightest lights and the darkest darks to help catch and direct the viewer's eye. It doesn't have to be exactly like whatever your reference is. Okay, you can push it and push those values and make them a little lighter or darker or make more gray values in between to really find form and help the viewer's eye move around your drawing, okay? So I'm just gonna real quick kind of find the shapes. Now this isn't as big of a deal that it's not, this little jaw comes over. Oh my gosh, but there's all these lines. What am I gonna do with them? You can get rid of this stuff so easy and pick it up or even draw over it that this part doesn't really matter. You can draw through your drawing even where you know there's not going to be those um, those colors and it's perfectly fine. Okay, it comes out nice and high. Mm -hmm. Oops, we're going to get stopped by our value. That's okay. All right, and then this comes up higher. So we've got his little horns going up. Now we've talked about blind contour drawings on the show, right? Didn't we talk about those at, at one point? This is where blind contour drawings can really help you because in looking back and forth, I'm noticing when I draw, I'm having to lean over the table. So this is a little bit harder because I'm kind of getting twisted around. The more I look at this and kind of draw those lines, kind of looked at that, the more this tends to be accurate as opposed to, um, as opposed to just 
you know, looking over here for a minute and then looking at my little goat that I'm working on. Okay. So I just want to get some kind of, of my shapes kind of formed in here, not too heavy because we're not, you know, we may want to make some corrections here as we go. So let's kind of get this. Okay. And you can see, well, that, I've actually not drug it through, probably because I've done that so many times with drawings, it makes me a little paranoid. If you get questions as we're going, just go ahead and fire away. Okay. So we've got kind of some of that shadow there. So here comes this guy, the eyelid. Uh, this is where if I want, I can pull this back out a little bit. See, that erases enough where that'll be able to be hidden under the... Uh... Now, with this, I'm actually... Where's my piece? I'm going to use some of this to kind of define the points that I've gotten here. It's, it's, you're looking at this less than this, okay? You're using this and kind of either out of the corner of your eye or even just once in a while glancing over, you're kind of drawing what you know. No, no I'm, not, I'm not saying that when you've not practiced this a lot, this is what you want to be using for your, you know, final, uh, a nice work drawing that, you know, you, you're either just for a commission or something like that. But this is where it's good to practice you know, and charcoal would be a nice, easy thing to practice in, in just that you're using kind of this visual information and trusting this more and kind of your hand, basically you're imagining it in your head and your hand is doing it on the paper, if that makes sense. Like you're tracing. Yes. Tracing with your right hand. Yes. Or... That's where it's good to have a sketchbook. If you don't have a sketchbook, that's a good place to have it to be able to start kind of working on that kind of practice stuff. Let's switch back to this bigger one. It's a little easier for me to hold. Okay. What? The goat creeps Kim out. She's not sure why, but. It's because of their creepy little pupils. They don't have a round pupil like yeah, people. people. It's, it's very weird. They always look like they're looking through you. Okay. Yeah, but horses have the same. Everybody loves horses. Yeah, it's not as, as obvious on them. They also have something to do with association with organic. Yes. <laughs> Just throw them in. Especially that shape of goat. <laughs> I just thought he was cute because I like the white goat. I think so he's cute. adorable. All I right. love the fainting goat videos. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here we've got, I'm going to start kind of putting in that pupil. And luckily with this guy, you can't really see it as easy. Now, I really can't see highlights on his eye, like in the center, like you would normally put. So don't put them. If they're not there, that's going to look weird if you put them on and they don't exist, right? So just leave them. Leave them be and go from there. Okay. So 
such a big sigh, Amanda. I know you wish you were getting all dirty. I can pass your piece. Okay. Oh, well, here you go. You can have these when we're done. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use this to come around and just to um, kind of put some different value on in some places. This looks dark now, but we can always kind of come back and lighten it up a little bit. Either with the eraser, we can kind of do some, we can do a little bit of kind of smudging with it. Kim's going to be sad when I put this goat up and she has to do it for homework, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> when you're drawing this sketch, are you looking for shapes and shadows first? Uh, I'm using, because really the shapes are in the shadows, right? The shadow is how you help kind of define that form. Well, uh, when you're looking for kind of what, what to start with. So you're going to kind of, I'm using this to kind of, cut out some of those little shadows that I see on, on the goat. And then you'll go in and add details later? Yes. Okay. So with these, there's not really a lot of... It's about, with, with charcoal, because charcoal is kind of a, a messier medium, this is about the simplification of the forms and kind of helping the viewer, you're giving them visual clues to help them view it. You're not trying to make it look exact, I mean, you can, there's some very amazing uh, representational art with people that do charcoal, but uh, the thing I like about it is that it's much looser and kind of a lot more free form where you don't have to have it look, you know, picture perfect. It doesn't have to be absolutely, you know, every little line in place with cross hatching and everything else. All right, now I'm going to take this and pull a little bit of this back out because I went a little bit too far into the black. Woo! <laughs> All right. All right, so now we've kind of got just a little bit of some of that value in there. Before I can decide where I'm going to go from that, I'm going to go ahead and use some of my white. Just so I can see where my lightest lights are going to be. Um, some people don't use this until right at the end, but I'd rather kind of see what I've got going on here. Obviously we don't need to do every little hair, but I'm kind of doing this to see if we can kind of get Okay, now that is, I'm going to take my hand and do that because I want that to be a softer look. You can see that kind of went over some of that. It mixed in some, but it still doesn't look so bad. See, I just went over that because that was too dark right there. So it's got a little bit. Oh, you guys can't see the top of the horns, so I'm not going to worry about working on that up there. Sorry about that. See where that's kind of um, 
going a little bit into that black, you can see a little bit of a little bit of that kind of covering it. Can you guys see that all right on the camera there? Now it's a white goat, but I don't want to put white everywhere because that doesn't help with the shadows, right? But I do want to help find some of this form to kind of round out some of these areas on this little guy. And he does have a little lightness on the edge of that eye. And then you really can't only see a little bit of some eyelashes over there. All right. So then we're going to start back in with a little bit of kind of refining some of this form. If people have questions, just holler them. Uh, what's your yeah. favorite eraser for charcoal? Um, I, you know what? I don't use an eraser with charcoal because I do a lot looser sketching. Um, if, if it was going to be one, it would probably be the Marie's. It seems like that takes care of the charcoal a little bit of the best. All right, so I'm going to Nola would like to know what type of charcoal is best for blending work? It really depends on what what brand you you like. The softer you go, obviously the blacker it's going to be. So you may want to use some of the um some of the less soft ones for your kind of first underdrawing and then go from there. But if you've got a, you know, a very gentle touch, you may be able to just do it with the, the soft right from the start. It just, everybody's going to be different, Nola. So it really is easier to try and see what types really work for you and what kind of your own personal style dictates and go from there because that's really going to be the easiest way to and, and and you know this isn't like saying you need to go invest in a tube of you know uh two hundred dollar yeah, yeah two hundred dollar oil paint charcoal is dirt cheap you know it's it's so inexpensive it is really even more usually inexpensive than even good graphite pencils so it's, it's something where you can try multiple brands and see what's going to be best, multiple softnesses, and just really get a good feel for what you think is going to kind of do the most for your work. Yeah, incredibly inexpensive. And... You guys are getting a little bit of me like at a disadvantage here because I don't like using sticks because they're just so incredibly messy. The Marie's charcoal is definitely my favorite. Um, we'll try to put up a link in the group. If you're not a member of our Jerry's Live group on Facebook, it may be something you'd be interested in. We have a, what, 2,000 plus member strong or is it 3,000 now? Amanda? I don't know the exact number. But it's it, it was above it maybe 3,000? Maybe. Okay. So so we've got a whole bunch of really awesome folks in there, and they share artwork and swap stories and inspire each other on a daily basis. In that group, I can post stuff, and we'll post the link of uh, the animal drawings that we did with, uh, what, there were four of them, right, Katie? But in, in the middle, there's a uh, fox that's done in the Jerry's Jumbo jet pencils, the oil impregnated pencils. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a gorilla that I did with the Marie's charcoal pencils. So that will give you an idea of kind of what you can do with those and more the type of work that I'm comfortable doing where I'm actually kind of at, a, at an angle where it's easy to work better than this is and. Could you coat a finished charcoal drawing with resin? I, you would want to try that. I would, I, I, my fear would be that the resin would eat the fixative and potentially make a big mess, but that doesn't mean that it's not possible. So it would be something that you definitely want 
to experiment with. You might want to talk to um, some people that do resin work, either with boats or you know things like that, and ask them for. I'm sure that most of those people have tried. Have, you know, they work with resin on a daily basis. They've tried pouring it over other things besides what they actually work on. Well, so I, I do remember when Hannah was here, Hannah Staten, to do our art. Yes, resin where we episode, did. Mm -hmm. um, she did mention that some papers have a tendency to go clear when That's the true. resin is poured yeah. on them and they need to be sealed with probably an acrylic gel or something. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely before you waste because resin is is not like charcoal. It is not as cheap. So you before you just start wasting that kind of stuff, you definitely want to either talk to somebody first or if you can't find somebody to give you advice, you want to actually do some testing before you just bust it out and go whole hog on it. Is charcoal archival? As far as is longevity? Mm -hmm. uh, Leonardo da Vinci's charcoal works are still around, right? Sure. Stuff even before that. Uh, the cave paintings on the walls of Le Coe in France that are all the animals done, oh, yeah. those are charcoal, right? I mean, that was mixed with animal fat, but it's still... You know, charcoal is in is in other art materials, and you know, so it's 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 more that that it needs to be sealed in a specific way to you know really protect it. One of our YouTube viewers mentions that she saw you using your finger to blend a little bit. Yep. Does the oil not affect? That's, it's on top of, I'm moving it, pigment around. I'm not, I'm not touching the actual paper uh, in and of itself. And so, that was the rest of her question. Yes. If that was yep. It's starting to get hard to see because I'm already somehow got chalk on my glasses. Or <laughs> what, I'm serious. I think I blew it and some of the dust came popping up. <laughs> So it's like now. Why not a no, that's why I like this the pencils because this doesn't it's not put down on such a and I like very specific paper that's very uh tacky. It's grabby. This this is a great toned paper. It is not as grabby. I'm here to tell you right now. Um with this type of charcoal that's much kind of softer and kind of crumblier, so to speak. All right, are we starting to kind of get the idea of this? We got just a couple more minutes. Yep. Wanna... Yeah, any last kind of questions before we go? And then I will uh, put that video up tomorrow in the group uh, by noon. Because I'll have to try to find it on our server or see if Will can. I think it, there might be a YouTube link already from in Jerry's, isn't there? Maybe for that one. Uh, I'll see. I'll, I'll see. remember. I'll, I'll find it. <laughs> when in doubt, Will helps out. Before, before you apply fixatives, do you need to get rid of any excess charcoal? Yes. <laughs> you can see with this paper, since it doesn't have a lot of tooth, this is where you would need to take it. <laughs> you don't want, you want to be very careful. You either want to very quickly invert it um, really, when you're working with something that's this soft charcoal, it's really not the worst thing to have it on an easel that's tilting forward because that dust then falls straight down. Otherwise, you can get it where it's going to start slipping and sliding. I don't know how well you guys can see, but there's little bits of dust everywhere. I mean, this just picked up a big finger full of dust from that on there. So definitely you want to... Uh, to knock off any excess, you know, and if anybody's got asthma, be really careful how you how you do it. You don't wanna, somebody walks in and you blow it in their face, you know? Could you use pastel paper with charcoal? Yes, that would actually be far better than, uh, than, than this type of a surface. This is actually, this would be perfect with oil pencil. It's very slick feeling to me. And very flat. There's not like a super ton of tooth on it. So it would be where you want to do very quick gestural stuff, not like a lot of heavier coats and blending like I'm kind of trying to do with this and where it's not really grabbing on. 
Nola is asking if you've used any of the tinted charcoal pencils. Um, you know, I, I haven't, but um, Ophelia just gave my son some to take back to school for um, some Derwent ones to take back to school to try. So for his figure drawing classes. So I might see if I can get them away from him before he goes and I can let her know uh, because they're pretty. I like the, I like the look of them. Uh, now I have used the, the Jerry's Jumbo Jet comes in the black, the white, kind of the sepia and the sanguine. So uh, I have used those four colors and one of those video on those videos that I'm gonna post, it has those so you can see that actually being used. I'm just, I, the only thing I can say about those is although they're very startlingly pretty, to me that's really not charcoal because charcoal is black, you know? And to me, you might as well at that point be using pastels because it's a color, not so much a, uh, the, the true kind of the monochromatic nature that, that charcoal tends to be. So that's just... Just my two cents doesn't make me right or wrong. It's just more of an observation of kind of interest and personal, you know, take on that kind of stuff. But the colors are pretty. There's a blue, Katie. What? You would like the blue. All right. All right, are there any other questions here before we go ahead and close it up for the evening everybody's that's it on my end yeah, kind of okay up. so this is finished by no means we've only had what maybe 20 minutes that we've worked on this but you can see that with these kind of higher values and then a nice value kind of a medium gray value in between you can really start getting a lot of form finding form finding highlights um, and all that. Now, I, I enjoyed this, what I probably would do, because I don't so much like the smudgy look, personally, just me. I would take the Marie's pencils and go back in and tighten that up and really help kind of find true kind of shape and form with it, and then maybe a white pastel that's a hard stick. So, um, but anyway, so this is just kind of beginner basics for charcoal with a few tips that maybe some of you didn't know or didn't think of, like using a glove. Look how clean my hand of my glove is. I did not drag it through it at all. My fingers, fingers are dirty. Fingers on the other hand. But, well, yeah, but I mean, but that didn't, pretty good. didn't smear. So, which probably is more just me having to keep my hand up and having learned to do it over the years. But, you know, if I was not used to that, I really could have put a lot of oil in this type of paper. So, and being slick, that would have sat right on top and charcoal would not have stuck to it. Mm -hmm. So, Which is the most frustrating thing when you're it gotten is. all into a drawing and then you get the one spot and it just won't stick. It's just so won't sad. do anything. It's so sad. It'll make you crazy. So, all right. Well, if we're all good, uh, I think we will let you go. Now, next week is... Did anybody Isn't that the watercolor one? Oh, yeah. I've been living for it. <laughs> been waiting. Yes, we're going to use Lucas watercolors and we're going to see how easy it is to travel with just a very small set of colors and we'll just do a little fun demo with that. Like I, like you would if I was like at the dog show like this last weekend. I actually got some pens out and did some sketches of a Frenchie that I liked that was adorable. So um, so I'll bring that so you guys can see it and, um, and be able to kind of see the type of work that I do when I go off to stuff doing dog shows. I actually try to get a little bit of sketching in besides competing. So, all right, that's what we'll be doing next week. You guys take care and we'll see you next Tuesday. Take care.